I'm just going to say a prayer before, um, before starting off the message today. God, I want to thank you so much for this time. Thank you for an amazing church family, God, that knows you and loves you. I just pray, Lord, that this time could be an encouragement, God, to each and every one as we remember you and what you've done for us. God, um, may we always stand in awe of who you are and the amazing gifts that you gave us when Jesus died on the cross and rose again. We love you, Lord. Amen. All right. Um, so I know, I know that all of us know about Jesus, or we would not be here. <laughs> we know um, that Jesus came to this earth and came to seek and to save those who were lost so that way they could be found. Um, I just want us to think about a familiar parable. Um, I'm going to start off with this. In Matthew 18, if you want to read it with me, you can. If you just like to sit and listen to, that's definitely fine. Matthew 18, 12 to 14 says, this is the parable of the lost sheep, one that probably many of us know quite well. Um, Jesus said these words, What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost. I think that's such a beautiful picture, and it's one that um, we've been using um, with children's ministry and children's worship, worship specifically um, over the last little while. This picture of a shepherd who goes um, out in search of the lost sheep. When the sheep is not in a safe place, not where they're supposed to be, the shepherd's not willing to just leave them there. But the shepherd will go to those places even if it's dangerous or whatever is going on around, he will go to bring that lost sheep home. Some of the kids have, have gotten to hear that and, and know that that is really the gospel message. That's what Jesus has done for us. He's the good shepherd, and we are like that lost sheep. I want us to imagine that lost sheep now, um, to think of that sheep that chose to go off on his own. The sheep, they wandered away from the flock. This is what the sheep chose to do. At first, maybe it was exciting. There were so many new things to see, so many new places to explore, experiences to be had. But after a while, as it got dark, so many things that could hurt the sheep started lurking around. Maybe the sheep could hear howls of wolves, different things happening around. And maybe that sheep, began to be scared, and it started to think about the safety that it used to know, the safety of being with the shepherd, being in the shepherd's care. And just then, when it was feeling afraid, the shepherd comes and takes that sheep on his shoulders and carries it home. We're like that sheep, and Jesus is like our shepherd. Sometimes in our lives, maybe some of us have chosen sin. Or we've chosen to be like that lost sheep and choose things that are not God's best for us. Maybe we've chosen to live for ourselves. Um, maybe we've chosen different things. But Jesus came to look for us, and he took us on his shoulders and carried us home. In the first service, um, Melody sang Amazing Grace with her daughter, and it was so beautiful. And it just reminds me so much of what Jesus has done for us. You know, no matter how long we've known about God, we should never stop being amazed by the grace that he's given us through Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I think that sometimes in our lives, you know, we, we go through the, the motions of, of living as Christians and, and we, we forget to, to stop on a regular basis to be amazed by his grace. But I hope that we can do that this morning and I hope that we can all do that on a regular basis. Maybe some of you have never actually felt lost, like a lost sheep. You know, some people, they have a special story. Their story might be that they grew up in a church 
and that they never had a rebellious time or a time where they really turned away from Christ. And if that's you, praise God. That's awesome. <laughs> if you have been able to, to stay in that sheep pen for your whole life, that is amazing. And that just means that that's what you also get to share with others, the grace that you've known your whole life. But maybe instead of like the sheep that chose to wander off, maybe some of us have a little bit different story. Um, I, I like this book. I actually read it several years ago, but was reminded of it as I was preparing this lesson today. Um, someone um, gave this book to me a long time ago, but it's called Lessons from a Sheepdog, and it's by a man called Philip Keller. And he was actually a shepherd. He had a ranch um, with sheep. And um, Philip Keller, he actually um, had found out about a certain kind of dog. Now, he was a shepherd, and he knew that, that he needed some extra help. So he was hoping to find a sheep dog. And um, he found this dog that was very, very angry. This dog um, lived with an owner who kept him tied up, and who got very upset when the dog would try to chase people on bikes or try to run. Um, the owner got very upset. And so they not only chained him once, they chained him twice. He was double chained, you know. And he was just a very, very angry dog because of the way that, that his owner was treating him. So he was mistreated. This dog was not able to be the dog that he was meant to be because he had been mistreated. And um, Philip Keller, he, he, he got this dog and he brought this dog home. And he knew that I'll give this dog a chance, but if this dog doesn't change, this dog's going to have to be put down. Um, they're going to have to die. This dog's going to have to die. And um, that was a very sad thing. And Philip Keller really wanted to give this dog a chance at life. So he brought this dog to his ranch. And Philip Keller started to give this dog food give this dog water, but the dog would refuse it. The dog didn't even want to take the food and water from him. Um, he, he would not let him pet him or touch him or anything. He was just very, very angry. This dog was angry because of the hurt he had experienced in his life. And um, finally, Philip, Philip Keller decided to try something. He decided um, instead of keeping this dog chained, he would let this dog be set free. So he unhooked the dog, unleashed the dog, and the dog ran. The dog just ran off. And every day, Philip would, would, he would try to, to come and to look for the dog. And he started to see the dog in this one place, kind of up on top of a cliff or on top of a, a hill. And um, he decided to put food out at that spot where he had seen the dog. And he came back the next day and saw that the food had been gone, that the dog actually ate the food. And um, he continued to do that for the dog. And then one day when he was out looking for the dog, he felt a wet nose come up and touch his hand. And the dog actually chose to come to him. And it, it was a big process for this man to develop trust with this dog who had been hurt. But finally this dog started to trust and realize that this master is different than my last one. This master actually wants good things for me. And it was so amazing how the relationship between the dog and, um, and the shepherd grew. And as this relationship grew, um, the dog actually started to respond um, so much to the shepherd that anything that the shepherd told him to do, the dog would do it eagerly. The dog would be so excited to do what the shepherd wanted him to do because the shepherd wanted this dog to be who he was made to be. I think sometimes that some of us, maybe we've not been like the lost sheep that chose to wander off and chose to do things wrong, but maybe some of us are more like this dog. We didn't choose to be with the wrong master or to be hurt in different ways, but hurt happened to us. And we did not know true love. And we didn't know who we were truly made to be because we had all these hearts and things that we were carrying along with us. But you know what? Sometimes even this affects our, our view of God. 
Sometimes we don't see him as the good shepherd because of our past experiences. But the amazing news is that no matter what's happened in our past, and this might all just be review to everyone, but I think we need to be reminded of this regularly. No matter what's happened in our past, Jesus wants to be like that good shepherd and set us free. He wants to set us free so that way we can choose to live the life he made us to live, the life that he meant for us to live. Yeah. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. Whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. He cares for the hurt, the lost, the hurting, and the broken. And he wants to heal people's hearts and to make them new, to give them a new chance at life. Now I want, to, I want you all to think about that lost sheep that was scared or that lost sheep that had wandered away to, to experience these new things but it's not the right place for the sheep. Imagine that that sheep is your child, or your father, or your mother, your sister, your brother, your grandchild, someone that you love so much. If that was that lost sheep, what would you do? What would, you do? would you let that sheep be lost, or would you choose to go and try to find them, to bring them back home? I think that that is what us sharing our faith is actually all about. Sometimes we don't look at it like that. We think, oh, will I offend someone? We think, oh, will, how will this person respond? Oh, it looks like a great big mountain in my way to share my faith with someone. It looks so difficult and so hard. But you know what? If those people, whether it's someone that you love and know personally or someone on the other side of the world, they're like that lost sheep, and the thing that can bring them home is you sharing with them about God's love. You get to go with that good shepherd and help to call them back home. It is awesome. It is a gift. It is a privilege to get to do this. I remember when I was a small child, and I had prayed and given my life to Jesus, and I just shared with everybody. <laughs> I was like, yes, Jesus died for you. You can have a new life in him. I would share it with everybody. And I remember praying with some of my friends when I was just teeny tiny. And now, you know, years, years down the, the road, sometimes for some reason we make things a lot more complicated as we get older, don't we? <laughs> years down the road, I remember being in India and I was walking with... Um, with a teenage girl, and she came right up to me, and she's like, you know, um, she was very, very interested in all this stuff about Jesus, but her family was Hindu, and they really did not want, you know, they were, they were very much dedicated to their religion, but she had such an interest in knowing about Jesus because she thought there was something more in that than what she was experiencing in her own religion. And so she would come to my house, and she would borrow Christian books from me and stuff, and um, she was just walking with me on the street one day and talking, and she's like, you know, I'm just listening, nodding, you know. She said, sometimes I, I start to question, is God really real? Is, is this stuff about Jesus really real? And I was actually walking with Ella at the time, too. Ella's probably two and a half or three. And Ella pipes up and said, of course Jesus is real. <laughs> it was just such a precious moment because for kids, it's simple. You know, when they're excited about something, they're going to let you know. Whatever that something is, when they are excited about something, they're going to tell you about it. They're not going to hold it back. They're going to tell you. I know sometimes when I'm telling stories to these guys, they have something to say. It's so hard to wait those extra two minutes to, to share what you want to say. You know, when you're excited about something, you just got to let it out. And I love that about kids. I think they can teach us a whole lot about this whole gospel thing, don't you? Um, so we're going to turn again, Matthew 18, um, but we're going to look at verses um, 1 and 2. And it says, At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And you know what? They might, they might have wanted to hear their own names then, huh? <laughs> Maybe it'll be you, 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 or you. <laughs> but you know what Jesus said? He called a little child 
and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Now that would be a blow. (laughs) But how beautiful, how beautiful that is. We need to stop making everything so complicated and realize the simplicity that children see of, I've got good news to share, I'm going to share it. I got something wonderful happening, I'm going to share it. So, I'm going to call children up who have been in elementary Sunday school and learned your ABCCDs. Anyone who wants to, come right up here to the front real quick. Okay, anyone who wants to. I need at least a few. Come on. <laughs> Lily, Maddie, you two definitely know. Come on. Okay, Elle will come. Right up here, right up here. Anyone else? Jackson. I, I really need Jackson. Jackson knows this. Lily, Caroline, Hannah. Yeah, well, I'll say it together. Don't you guys worry. You don't have to say anything alone. We're all going to say it together, okay? All right. Well, we have been talking about this. Does anyone remember what is the gospel? Guys, what does that word gospel mean? Does anyone remember? What is gospel? Good what? What do you think it is? Good news. Good news, that's right. And do you guys have good news inside your hearts to share with people? Yeah, that's right. So um, we've learned a really simple way to share the good news. And um, these guys have memorized it. So over several weeks, a lot of these guys memorized it. And many of them can say it off by heart. So we'll all say it together. No pressure at all. We'll just all say it together, okay? All right, instead of the A, B, C, Ds, we do the A, B, C, C, Ds. So it's a little bit different. But here we go. A, what does A stand for, guys? All have sinned. And our verse is Romans 3.23. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everyone's done things that are bad, right? Now, B B stands for, because of sin, we deserve to be punished. So that's kind of sad. We don't like to get punished when we do things bad. But the truth is that when, when we've done things that are bad, even if it's one thing, right? Even if it's one thing, we actually deserve to be punished, okay? And our verse is Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death. But the good news, but... The gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. That's right. And then the first C stands for, good news is? Christ. And this is what he did, John 3, 16. For God... Whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. That's right. And then the second C stands for um, the good news that Christ came and died for us. We can do what? We can confess our sins. We can say, sorry, Jesus, I'm so sorry. I know I've done things bad, but I know that you came to forgive me from my sins. And it's 1 John 1, 9. It says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins. Good. And then the last one is D. D stands for open the door and let him in. Say, come in, Jesus. I want you to live with me. I want to live with you every single day. Our verse is Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. Isn't that awesome? Woohoo! Good job, guys. You guys can go ahead and sit down. Good job. Good job. These kiddos know about sharing the good news. And as you heard earlier, even from our camp, it was so special to see their boldness. They, um, they took those dollars, some of them bought, bought gum for other kids, some of them bought candy for people just to bless them. 
some of them bought candles and says, um, I hope this can remind you that Jesus loves you and they gave it to people. You know what? They didn't tell you. Some of them went up to do kind things to people with no strings attached and some people said, no, thank you. Did you know that? Some people actually rejected these amazing kiddos. But did they stop sharing? No. Did you guys stop sharing after you guys got rejected a couple times? No. no. And you got to bless so many people because you did not stop sharing. And I think that is a huge lesson to all of us. You know, sometimes it might not always be easy for us to share our faith, for us to share the good news, for us to share the gospel. But should we stop when it's not easy? No, we should not. We got to keep on sharing because this good news is the hope that can bring the lost sheep home. So, last thing. I left it all the way over here. I'll go bring it over. So what makes it easier for us to share our faith? Okay? Um, you know, we pray. We, we say, Jesus, come into my life. Please forgive me from my sins. I ask you to make me new. And you know what? He does. He makes us totally new. And as we do that, it's like Jesus is, is filling us up inside. He's giving us some of himself. And you know, we get baptized and we, we announce publicly, I'm going to live my life for Jesus. Now, if we just did those two things and then the rest of our lives we just said, okay, see you, God, and, and just did our own thing, we, it would be pretty hard to share our faith, wouldn't it? Would that be hard to share your faith? Yeah, but you know what? When you want to share your faith, when you want to become close with someone, what do you guys think you do? How about kids? I'll ask you guys here in the front row. So if you want to become best friends with somebody, what do you need to do? Be nice, yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, be kind to them, help them. If they get hurt, you can help take them to the nurse. That's right. Now, could somebody be your best friend if you never hung out with them? No, no. If you never talked to them, could they still be your best friend or no? They can't. They can't? Why do you think? They can, you think? They'd still be your best friend in the whole world if you never even said hi to them? Maybe if you said hi. But um, I, I think the big thing is sometimes when we want to become really close to someone, we might start to have play times with them. We might have play dates with them. We might um, invite them over to our house. We might talk to them at school or have lunch with them. We want to spend time with people to make them our best friend, to, to grow closer to them, to just show them that we care about them. And you know, I think a lot like that in our relationship with Jesus, we need to be so full of Jesus that his love can come out of us. Um, in the Bible, it says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And what is our hearts full of? What are our hearts full of? Are they so full of Jesus that those words are just coming out of us? I hope so. I hope so. So as we spend time with Jesus, even Jesus went alone on the mountainside and he would spend time alone with God. As we spend time with Jesus, we fill up so full of Jesus that his love just starts to overflow. His love just starts to come right out of us, and it is awesome. So let's, um, let's bring this back to, to just more, it's, it's so much more simple, you know? It's so much more simple. Our relationships with Jesus, it's so special that we get to, we get to know him. Our Savior's invited us to know him and to trust him and live with him each and every day. And as we do that, we fill up with his love, not so that we can just keep it for ourselves, but so that we can share it. We can help to go find those lost sheep and bring them home. Yeah. Jesus, I want to thank you for um, your word. I want to thank you that you are not willing that anyone should be lost but you desire for us to be your hands and your feet to partner with you and to get to help bring people back home, back where they belong, with the right master 
that's you. The master that desires for us to live alive. This life is so short, and may we live it to the fullest. God, I want to thank you that you love each and every one of us that much and desire for us to live how we were meant to live. Thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen.